Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about a leak code problem and the problem's name is find common elements between two arrays. So in this question, we are given two integer arrays, nums1 and nums2 of size n and m respectively. We have to return an array of size 2 as the output. So the first element inside that array is going to represent the number of indices such that they occur at least once inside nums2. And the second part of the answer array will be the number of indices i such that the elements inside nums2 at least appear once inside nums1. Let's take the example 1 and see how we are getting this output. So in this case we can see the output array is consisting of two indices 3 and 4. So 3 will represent the number of elements inside nums1 which are repeating inside nums2. So here you can see 3 is repeating. 2 is repeating, so 2 is 1, 3 is repeating again, so 3 is 1, 4 and 1 are not present inside nums2, so in this case we get 3 as the output which are repeating inside nums1, so 3 is justified, now let's see why we are getting 4 inside nums2, so 2 is repeating, 2 is repeating again, i is not present inside nums1, 2 is repeating again, 3 is repeating here and 6 is not present, so here you can see we are getting 4 elements which are repeating inside nums1. So we get 4 as the output in the second part of the nums array. So if you take a look at the constraints here, the size of the arrays is very small which is of length 100 and the, each element inside the nums array is also going to be between 1 and 100. So let's take the same example. So first I'm declaring an output array of size 2. So this will be our output array. And since the constraints are very small of size 100, I'm going to use a array to count the number of uh, elements. So I'm going to declare two arrays, count1 which will represent the uh, array elements inside nums1 and count2 will represent the array elements inside nums2. So here I'm using a for loop to iterate through nums1, find the count of the array elements. Uh, each time they appear, I'm incrementing that element for that particular index. So this is for nums1 and this is for nums2. So we start from 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on up to 100 and similarly there will be 100 elements and this is for nums2 so we start our index positions from 0 1 2 3 and so nums1 is this and this is nums2 so length of both the arrays is 101 because we have to handle index positions and result 1 and result 2 are initially 0 because they will be the first part of the array so this is result 1 and this is result 2. So I'm using those variables to fill the output array. So answer of 0 will be result 1, answer of 1 will be result 2. Finally I'm returning answer. Now let's see how we are building this result 1 and result 2. For that I'm iterating from 1 to 100 because those will be the value of elements. So value of elements will be 1 to 100. So here let's fill the nums1 and nums2. So for that I'm iterating through nums1. So here you can see I'm iterating through nums from, from left to right. So 4. So count of 1 of 4. 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is 4. This will be incremented as 1. Initially everything will be 0. And each time you find those elements, you increment. Second element is 3. So this will become 1. So third element is 2. So this will become 1. Fourth element is 3. So increment 1 to 2 because you're doing plus plus. And last element is 1. So count of 1, this is this. So I filled count 1. So count 1 is complete. Now let's fill count 2, which is this array. So I iterate from left to right. We start with counts 2 of 2. So nums 2 of i, which is 0. Nums 2 of 0 is 2. So counts 2 of 2, 0, 1, 2. So this will be incremented to 1. Again you get counts 2 incremented. So 1 will become 2. Now 5 counts 2 of 5. So this is 4 and 5. So we increment this. Again we are at 2. So increment 2 to 3. Now we are at 3. So increment. Now we are at 6. So increment. And we reach the end of the nums 2. So this 2 is done. This for loops are executed to fill counts 1 and count 2 respectively. And we declare two results, result1 and result2, as I mentioned, to fill this part. Now let's form result1 and result2. For that, I'm iterating through 1 to 100, representing the ranges of the array element which will be present. So I've taken the same example as example1. And now let's see how we are filling the result1 and result2 to place it inside the answer array. 
So I placed two breakpoints. So let's debug the code. So here, as you can see, this is nums1, this is nums2. We filled the count1 with the frequency of elements of nums1 and count2 with the frequency of elements inside nums2. So here you can see I, we got the same value 0, 1, 1, 2, 1, and here you got 0, 0, 3, 1, 0, 1, 1. As I've already shown you while annotating the count1 and count2. So this is how we are filling count1 and count2 here. And now let's see how we are calculating result1 and result2. So first i is equal to 1 because we start from 1 until 100. So this will happen for 100 times. So we are checking if count 2 of 1, count 2 of 1, 0, 1 is 0, 0 is greater than or equal to 1. No, so it won't go inside. So let me step over. Now here it will check count 1 of 1, 1. So 1 is greater than 1, so it will go inside. So result 2 is equal to count 2 of 1. Count 2 of 1 is 0, so 0 will be added to result 2. Now i will become 2. Now count 2 of 2 is equal to 3. So 3 is greater than 1. So result 1 will be updated with count 1 of 2. Count 1 of 2 is 1. So 1 will be added to result 1. So result 1 is now having the value 1. And now here count 1 of 2. Count 1 of 2 is 1. 1 is greater than 1. So result 2 will also be updated. Result 2 will be updated with value of count 2. Count 2 of 2 is 3. So 3 will be added to result 2. So here as you can see result 2 is having the value 3. Now i will be equal to 3. Count 2 of 3. 0, 1, 2, 3 is 1. 1 is greater than 1. So it will enter. Count 1 of 3 is 2. So 2 will be added to result 1 which was already having 1. So 1 plus 2. So result 2 will become 3. So result 1 will become 3. So result 1 became 3. i is 3. Count 1 of 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. 2 is greater than 1. So it will enter. So here it's having 0. 1, 2, 3, 3, 3 index is having 1, so 1 will be added to 3. So result 2 is updated to 4, result 1 is 3, and now it will keep moving forward. i is 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, it is 0, so it won't enter. Now here, i is 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, it is equal to 1, 1 is greater than 1, so it will enter. The value of count 2 of 4 is 0, so it will remain same. Now I will become 5 and it will repeat the same process and now it will keep skipping because the rest of the values here are zeros and here also the rest of the values here are zeros for this example uh, because the arrays are small in size and if here it is only having 5 elements so it is accessing only first 4 indices and here it is having 6 elements so it is accessing only first 5 elements and rest of the values will be zeros in both the arrays. So now if you come out of this, result 1 is 3. So as you can see, i is getting updated until 100. So finally, we get the values 3 and 4, result 1 and result 2, which is present inside answer. And I'm printing it as an array. So this is the main part of the logic. We are building result 1 and result 2 using the values present inside count2 and count1. So using count2's values, we are updating result1 and using count1's values, we are updating result2. So the time complexity of this approach is O of n, where n is the length of the arrays, nums1, nums2. And space complexity is also O of 1 because we are not using any extra space to solve this question. And this is a constant space inside array, O of 1, 0, 1. So for every question, you will get O of 1, 0, 1. So this will be O of 1 as constant space. That's it guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.